Water is usually thought of as a non-conductor. However, very sensitive devices can detect some conductivity in water, no matter how pure it is. Even very pure distilled water contains some ions. Why is this so? In any sample of pure water, almost all of the water molecules remain as neutral water molecules and don't react chemically with each other. However, about 2 out of every 556 million water molecules will react chemically with each other. We'll show two of them here with their bonding and non-bonding electrons. The purple one will act as an acid and the blue one will act as a base. A hydrogen atom breaks away from the water on the left and leaves its shared electron behind. Because it has lost an electron, it acquires a positive charge, becoming an H plus ion or a proton. Because the OH has gained an electron, it acquires a negative charge, and it's called a hydroxide ion, with the formula OH-. The proton moves to a non-bonding electron pair on the other water molecule. We'll change its color to blue. The positive charge is now distributed over the whole ion, instead of just being on the H that it came with. This is now a hydronium ion, with the formula H3O+. The process can be summarized by an equation. When a proton is transferred from one water molecule to another, the water on the left gains a proton to become a hydronium ion, and the water on the right loses a proton to become a hydroxide ion. However, when a hydronium ion in water encounters a hydroxide ion, the reverse reaction can also occur where a proton is transferred from the hydronium ion to the hydroxide ion, forming two molecules of water. Because both the forward and reverse reactions continuously occur, this is an equilibrium, so we use a double arrow here. Instead of writing these as two separate water molecules, we can combine them to show them simply as two water molecules. We'll move this arrow over a bit. This equation is a very important equation to know. It's called the ionization of water equation. Sometimes it's called the self-ionization of water because water acts as both the acid and the base. In chemistry 12, we refer to it simply as the ionization of water. At a normal room temperature of 25 degrees, the reactant liquid water is highly favored. To illustrate this, we show there's more reactant than products. The relative sizes of the letters here are very qualitative and nowhere near to scale. The concentrations of hydronium and hydroxide ions are only about two billionths that of water. The KQ expression for this reaction is equal to the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of hydroxide. Because the water is a liquid, it is not included in the KQ expression. Because this equilibrium constant is specifically concerned with water, we change the symbol from KQ to KW. KW is called the ionization constant of water. The value for KW is temperature dependent. At 25 degrees, the value is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th. It is very important to remember that the value of KW is 1 times 10 to the negative 14th only at 25 degrees Celsius and at no other temperature but Kw is always equal to the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of hydroxide at any temperature for which water is in the liquid state. Because all aqueous solutions contain water, and all water ionizes to form some hydronium, some hydroxide ions, we know that all aqueous solutions contain some hydronium and some hydroxide ions. By definition, for any aqueous solution, if the concentration of hydronium is equal to the concentration of hydroxide, the solution is said to be neutral. And if the concentration of hydronium is greater than the concentration of hydroxide, the solution is said to be acidic. And if the concentration of hydronium is less than the concentration of hydroxide, the solution is said to be basic. These are the definitions we'll use for neutral, acidic, and basic solutions. You must make sure that you know these.